Hello friends, it's Tara and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. I'm so stinking excited today to be showing you how to do some colored pencil coloring on craft cardstock and I'm using a super adorable Lawn Fawn stamp set. So I am going to start out here by showing you how I use this O oh Gnome stamp set. Isn't that like the cutest name? Like O oh Gnome um, to create just a cute little scene on the front of my super basic craft card base. So I am using those clear stamps just to lay out kind of an idea of what I want for my scene. And then I'm going to use my mini Misty. I was going to do it without it. And y'all, I was like, you know what? I am no way going to be able to eyeball this. <laughs> so I was like, I have tools in my arsenal, right? It's been a while for me since I've done some crafting, so I had to like almost remember what I have that I'm able to do these cards with. It was kind of funny to watch me stumbling around my craft room, but you know what? It's like riding a bike, right? Like you start going and you start to remember these things and it um, comes right back to you and I was like so excited. So, anywho, I decided to use my mini Misty so that I could position everything absolutely perfectly while I was stamping. I'm also using some post-it tape to create some little masks of these stamps as I go along. So you can see that once I stamp an image, I'm just going to stamp it again. I'm not even going to re-ink. I'm just going to stamp it right on top of the post-it tape, cut it out, and then stick it on top of my image. What this is going to let me do is make it look like things are behind other things in the image. So you always want to start with everything that you want in the most front, like forefront of your image. So I started with the little tulip in the gnome's hand because it's going to be the first thing you see in the image and then the gnome and then the mushroom to go behind the gnome. And then I'm going to go even a step further and add some more little tulips and some flowers kind of around the gnome and the mushroom just to kind of make it look like a completed scene. I'm going to just be 100% honest with you guys and tell you I had no plan when I started this card. Basically, I just had been wanting to craft for a while because I've been missing it. And my kiddo was like, let's make a card tonight. Like, kind of out of nowhere to be honest she was like she hasn't crafted in a while either we used to craft together all the time she was like let's make a card tonight I was like okay I had zero plan but I knew I wanted to use this super sweet stamp set and I also knew I wanted to start out with something a little bit more simple because I haven't been in the game in a while and I was a little nervous about doing something super complex so I was like you know what one layer card, do some Prismacolor coloring, that'll be perfect, right? So I basically just started stamping without a real plan in mind, which is kind of my MO, you guys. Some people plan things out like way ahead of time. I have never been that kind of crafter. I have always been a crafter who flies by the seat of my pants. I usually have an idea in my mind, but it's never 100% planned. So just to let those of you out there that are also kind of um, on the whim crafters know, like that's totally okay. So now I'm going to peel up those masks and you can see how stinking cute that little um, scene is. I also put my sentiment on there. It says there's no one like you. <laughs> so precious. Now I'm going to start my coloring. So I am using Prismacolor colored pencils. You can see that I have the Prismacolor sharpener. It has two different sizes. I highly recommend grabbing a nice pencil sharpener if you're going to use Prismacolors because the lead is super soft in the Prismacolors, which makes amazing opaque color. Um, it's got really waxy pigment. I love, love, love my Prismacolors, but y'all, the lead is super soft and it breaks a lot. Um, clearly, once again, been out of the game for a little while. I have several spots in this video where I go totally out of frame. Y'all, cut me a little slack here, okay? <laughs> I'm getting back in the groove. So I'm super sorry. I do. I definitely catch it and get it back in the frame. But I definitely have some moments where I'm a little out of frame. So I apologize for that, you guys. Um, also, it was nighttime and dark here in Oregon. So my lighting is a little bit wonky. But I'm going to try to work on that and see if I can find some different lighting for my craft desk. Because nighttime is when I'm able to craft, you guys. So if we want to be able to do this, i got to figure out this nighttime lighting thing. So... When I am coloring with my Prismacolor pencils on craft, which I will just tell y'all is one of my absolute favorite techniques because I love the way the color pops on the craft cardstock. Like Prismacolors are bomb on white cardstock, basically any cardstock, but there's just something really special about the Prismacolors on craft that makes my heart happy, you guys. I seriously love it. So my strategy when I do this is basically just layering up my color. I start really light. I only use two shades per um, little area on this card. I mean, these images are pretty teens, so I didn't really have to do a whole bunch of shading, but I definitely wanted some dimension there for them. 
but I did really simple shading and I used only really two layers and then I used different pressures to help add different depth of color. So that's another great trick with your Prismacolors. If you're maybe limited on color choices, like say you only have one of the smaller like 10 color sets, um, you can definitely create different hues of the same color by using different pressures when you push with them. So super versatile tool if you guys love coloring. I highly recommend getting yourself a good set of colored pencils. Super great to have in your arsenal. So you'll notice with all the different colors, I'm basically just going in and layering and going back and shading and going back and layering and going back and shading. I mean, it's just, it's just a repetitive thing for me. It's super relaxing, which is part of what I love about it, which is super important for me because I'm crazy busy these days. And so relaxing is something I feel like I do not get enough of. I'm sure a lot of us feel that way. Here I go off the screen again, because you know, it's how I roll apparently. <laughs> That's quality video tutorials, right? Is when you just make people guess what you're doing. Um, anyway, uh, you can see that some of my images are kind of shiny sometimes when they get in the light just right. That is because of that waxy pigment in these fabulous colored pencils. It almost creates like a little bit of a sheen. It's absolutely fabulous, you guys. They're so, so good. I love it. So I'm going to keep coloring these little images and I'm going to just um, take a moment to address what for some of you may be a glaring difference between this video and the last one that I did almost a year ago. You guys, can you even stinking believe it? I can't even believe it. I promised myself I wasn't going to talk about how this is me returning to crafting because I listened to my last like six videos and like every single one of them is me like, oh my gosh, I'm back. And then I disappear for like ever again. So I was like, that's getting old. So I just talked about it, but I'm not going to keep talking about it. But, um, there, geez, there I am again off the screen. It's coming back soon, I promise. Um, anyway, I'm sure you noticed at the beginning of the video, if you've been following me for a while, that my um, logo screen is different. So I have been um, curly cues since I started crafting. I'm doing a little bit of a rebranding, you guys, because I have a couple different business lines that I want to kind of bring together into one place. And so I'm rebranding under the Tara LeRae name. So just so you know, that will be me. That's what you'll be seeing things coming out in in the future. I have a website I'm building, so that's going to be debuting really super soon. Um, can we just talk real for a second about how much white colored pencil on Prismacolor is the bomb? I, like how amazing is that? You guys, it, it just pops, you guys. It's seriously like the best. One of my favorite things. Um, I forgot that little tulip behind the mushroom. Do you see that? There we go. I found it. Um, so anyway, so be expecting that Tara LeRae rebrand. I'm still waiting on my new logo. So the one you see today is going to be temporary, but I'm super excited to be starting this new adventure with you guys. Um, so stay tuned for new fun stuff coming on that. Um, so now that I'm done coloring my scene, I wanted to add just a little bit of shadow just to ground it because it is all kind of floating out there. So I just used a couple colors of gray to do that. And really super light, you guys. I didn't want this to be like glaring at all. And then the last step I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my colorless blending pencil. Highly recommend these, y'all. Like if you have Prismacolors, get yourself some blending pencils. Makes everything really super smooth. You can see how it smooths out that color. I love them. So I went over most of the images with the blending pencil. And now I sharpened my black pencil up like uber crazy sharp with my good pencil sharpener. And I'm going to go back over all the stamped lines. Now, I'm doing this mostly because, as we talked about before, the pigment on Prismacolors is a really great, thick, waxy, opaque pigment. It's absolutely amazing. It covers so, so well. It's so gorgeous. But it also, because it's so opaque and amazing, it doles out those black stamped lines as you're coloring. And it's almost impossible not to color over the top of the lines. Like you can stay inside the lines, but it's almost impossible not to go over the top of them. So what I like to do is just sharpen up my black pencil super sharp and trace all those lines. I think it kind of gives the image a really cool, almost hand-drawn look too, because then even the stamp lines look like they're colored pencil at the end, which is super fun for me. So my final step on this really simple one layer card is going to be to add some white highlights with my white Signal Uniball gel pen. And you guys, legit, that's the whole card. Like super simple, right? Nice um, intro back into the crafting world for me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this card. I super hope I'm going to be able to do lots more going forward. I'm going to have supplies listed down below. Um, if you're interested in anything that I'm using here in this card, go ahead and check that out. At the end here, I have linked to a couple other videos that I think you guys might enjoy. You can go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Tara LeRae, or I'm over on Facebook at Curly Cues. Um, you guys are amazing, and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks. Bye.